This show. Whoa. So when I was making the slides and this show, when I saw this, I was like, oh my god, this show has two ways it can go. <laughs> Glory or despair. <laughs> right? If it, it could be, if you look at this picture and you look at that text, this could be new Bokarana. Yeah. It could be. And it would be the most glorious, because we really need something like that. There hasn't been one since Bokarana. Uh, but this could also be like the Eden of the East, where it starts out like a Bokarana and then goes... <laughs> yeah. So is it, have you seen Bokarana? Who's not if you haven't, you, the manga is actually all out now in English. You can buy it all. It starts a lot like this. A whole bunch of kids, and it doesn't really tell you what's going on. They're just like on a school trip. And then... Things go downhill, and the show is just about a series of children. Right, so these people, people go into the mountains death. to this village on a bus trip, and the village is whoa, and then they're in, I guess they're in this yeah. weird village for the rest of the show. Uh, that sounds pretty cool to me, all mysterious. In despair over the real world, waiting to escape the tedious daily life, waiting to restart. This is Bokurano too. It could be. I think, you know. I'm children eating. dying boogaloo. But I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm 100% going to watch episodes of the Show until it proves it is not Bokarano. You like, it is not a spoiler to tell you the kids die in Bokarano. Every episode a kid dies. <laughs> it's a spoiler to tell you which one's in which order. Yeah. Okay. This show is getting watched, definitely. This is, that's the best show we've seen so far. Nope. <laughs> so when we did our panel at Anime Boston, our annual panel, Judge Anime by its cover, one of the anime we judged by its cover was The Lost Village. And we said, oh, this looks like it has an interesting concept. It looks like it's sort of got one of those uh, like scenario situations. Like nine doors, nine whatevers, nine something. Yeah, you know, the things that they nine sort of... Nine doors, nine dogs. There's a lot of Japanese and Asian, uh, you know, in all mediums, books, movies, you know, especially, you know, I think the oldest one I remember is like Battle Royale, where you get a bunch of varied characters and they get somehow get stuck separated from society in, in an s- oddly specific predicament right in a in a in a scenario with a bunch of rules and or mysteries and something supernatural or something sinister now this is a common trope outside of anime like there's a bunch like if you go to netflix and just go through random movies there's a lot of like american movies that you don't even remember that are this exact same thing yeah it's just in anime, there seems to be an acceleration of these over the last five or six years. Right. Also, you know, video games, visual novel type thing. Yeah, right? just nine, nine whatevers is the one I always think of. Yeah, uh, and the sequel to that, uh, but, Virtue's but, Last Reward. But when we reviewed it, we also said it kind of had a Bokurano vibe. We weren't sure if it would yeah, be it, like the right, show. Right, because Bokurano is basically one of those ones, only good, right? It's, yeah. You know, the, these kids, they're not completely separated from society in that one. It's actually, that's what made Bokurano cool is that they sort of, Aren't separated from society, yep. and they like they go to like the military. And like, yeah, Yo. like they go to the cops <laughs> right away. Yeah, well, uh, right away ish, but yeah. yeah, basically, they go as right away as you could. Like you can understand why someone wouldn't. But go to it's the cops. still it's still a group of varied characters that get into a predicament with a lot of specific rules governing the scenario that they have to navigate, and horrors and supernatural and you know so sinister Scott things. Scott watched the whole thing. I've seen the first five episodes. I watched up to. What I'm only going to describe, no real spoilers, as the the giant stuffed kappa with a real human face also in it, like a it's photo a half, of a Japanese it's a half, man. It's half penguin, half face. But like photo of a real person, not even like drawn. Yeah, the supernatural thing. But uh, you don't need to watch anymore. You're good. Yeah, I was gonna ask you, should I finish I'll t- it? I'll tell you everything you need to know if you tell me more. Uh, Wheel so, of time. <laughs> right, well, maybe we'll do a trade. <laughs> trade. So here's the thing. <laughs> From the first, this is another situation. This happens to us kind of often, where the first episode of a show makes it look like it's going to be real good. Right. So the first episode of this show makes it look like about eighty percent good. Right. It sets you up on the scenario. These people are found on the internet about this hidden village. They're on a bus that they rented and like a tour group to go find it on an adventure. The, the bus is weird and the there's bus, sinister undertones. Right, they all want to escape their lives for some reason, so you got to learn about each character. The only thing about the first episode, which holds true for the rest of the show, is that, the, you know, you have a bunch of varied characters. And when we say a bunch, it's not like a normal anime. It's not like nine or ten. It's We're like 30. Tw- 20 or 30. It's there are 30 people. There's a lot. Plus all the new characters. Yeah. So... But, you know, the trope of these shows is, like, introduce all the characters, give the backstories, and then the writing always seems to come down to, well, these five are together, so let's consult our sheet of their personalities and have them interact in a superficial Mm -hmm. way like those characters would interact. This show takes that to such an extreme Mm -hmm. that after the first episode, I actually thought 
that this show is going to be like what Nadeshiko was to robot shows. I thought this was going to be like, this is taking the piss out of the genre. No. But as I started watching more, I worry that that is an unintentional side effect of the really bad writing. Yeah, so the characters, a lot of the characters are really, really shallow and one-dimensional and really caricatures almost, right? Yeah. Like, you know, some of them get episodes that like explain their backstory and sort of give a reason for But the they're so dumb. Like the surly guy, his backstory is I was doing an IT project and something went wrong vaguely and I got chewed out by my bosses because of it. And therefore That's why I want to run away from society. Yeah. And that's why like, you think I have this personality of being angry at everything like, all the you time. Like you think we're joking? That is literally it. Yeah, it's really shallow and not, you know, complex or interesting. And what makes it worse is that even though they show some of the characters' pasts and the reasons for the way they are, uh, they, the way they act is really exaggerated and hyperbolic. Which is okay they, in some senses, because like one of them, sure. uh, Love Pion Love or whatever. Love, Love Pond. Love Pond. Her backstory is like, you know, pretty serious. Did you see her backstory? Uh, no. All right, whatever. So her backstory but, is pretty serious and explains why the way she is, but basically all she does is be like, Execute people. I'm a guy. And like, that's oh, not- he committed a crime. We should execute that guy. And she's literally, she like hysterically screams, execute him, execute him, execute him constantly. Uh, no, at least the show follows through on that because like in the third episode, she does fucking try to murder someone. Like, right. Like strangling But it's like, she's right just a basically a, a nut. <laughs> she's just like, like a frantic all, nut. And the only one who I don't think is a nut is Lion. Anyway, and the, the other thing is that... The, she, they don't develop right further. It's like we learn Love Pond's backstory. We well, see, how, I, we see that the, she's based fucked up. Based on the up. first episode, they're all dead. They're all dead. This is the afterlife. No, but we see that she's fucked up now, but then she doesn't change after that really very much at all, only very slightly. The only characters that have any development are like the few main ones. Yeah, and you know what? The main ones suck. Right, the main ones, because that's the thing that happens in so many stories, especially anime, is the more main the character is, the more generic they are because I... There's some idea that writers have that the main character needs to be more relatable. The, the be- worst example of this ever is Utawane Rumono. It's a bunch of great characters everywhere, and then the main character is literally this vague, masked dude with no history. I think Full Metal Alchemist is my favorite example because you have all these awesome characters like Hughes and Mustang and shit. Yep. And um, meanwhile, the main characters are like the, the twins. Are like the most boring. <laughs> yeah, but it's at like least I'm, they have some personality. They have some. They're not. They're not nothings, right? You but it's like Rumono, It's just like you pretend you're that guy while sure. you watch it. But it's like you know, I wish that the they weren't even in it, and it was about the you know the other awesome. But kid. like main kid number one. They, so again, if you watch just the first episode, the show looks like it's going to be so great because it it, it starts looks out, like it's going to be okay. Well, it looks like it's going to be great. In this, like, Nadeshko-esque, deconstructive, like, the character intros, like, it's almost like a parody because literally the bus driver is kind of crazy and, like, everything's weird. The bus driver is actually the most normal person. Sinister music. But he has issues, too, obviously. Not the bus driver, the like, the tour group leader. Oh, no, he's not. But all the characters are, like, super into it. He's like like a Mormon type They, one by one, introduce themselves and tell you their backstory, or at least tell you something about themselves. And that scene goes on for like 10 minutes as 30 characters. That's pretty much the whole first episode. And that was great, because some of the characters had like all this anime nonsense. Some of them were obviously crazy. Like the one kid's like, I'm Jack, and wouldn't talk anymore. Mm -hmm. But And then there's the other Jack who's dressed like a pirate or some shit. Jack and Jack, the characters keep confusing this, but actually it's Jack and uh, Judgeness. Mm -hmm. And just saying those words... In Japanese, they sound similar, but it's Jack and Judgeness, and these two characters keep fighting about how they have the same name and it's bullshit. Like, oh my god, you stole my OC. Yeah. The characters are just so stereotypical that the first episode, I really believe that this show was taking that concept of we've got nine characters with mysterious backstories and just saying, fuck it, we got, I don't know, 30 and one of them's like literally just got guns, one of them is like literally a demon, let's just fucking go nuts. I thought that's what the show was going to be. Mm-hmm. The fact that the show is actually just badly written and trying to do this yeah. scenario Basically, seriously. Basically, they, they do find a, a mysterious village that's dist- mysterious, right? Because it's empty, but it's not like it, nothing's destroyed. It's just like, it looks like the people have recently departed and left everything there. And it's like, what's going on here? 
And then as they stay there and sort of try to start a new life, you know, of, of solitude for one the rest of the one, world. One by one, characters scream and freak out for no reason at nothing. People that- disappear. People, you know, discover weird things. People go off into the woods and shit happens. And but it's all so dumb, which again, I but still... But it, al- it alternates, as you would expect, between characters sitting around discussing things, like, a li- in a very Death Note kind of way. O- imagine if L was a bunch of characters, like, oh, is, is that person up to, is up to no good? No, that person's up to no good. I'd oh, watch but, that. But that person went into the woods, and did, and that person wants to leave, and that person doesn't. But here's again why then, I thought it was going to be a parody, because in and then, all those and then, scenes... And then stuff happens, and then they talk again. Again, and the stuff but in all those scenes, talk again. the stuff that happens was like really dumb, and they were all overreacting pretty much every time up until yes, the fifth episode. Yes, they overreact about everything. But two, the argue, like the discussions like, they why had. Why won't you tell us? You must be no good. The discussions they had were so dumb and fake. Like our group of friends playing mafia sounds more together than these kids. Yes, it was like it's like a bad game. Like of at mafia. one point, the, like at one point, a kid starts singing a song, and then someone else is like. That's not the lyrics. Aren't the lyrics this? And then some other kids like, no, I thought the lyrics were this. And that's one. They have this discussion about that, just as seriously as, well, so and so was murdered. So who could have done it? Well, so and so was somewhere else. You were you were the last person to see them. What happened? I and mean, we're gonna torture you and make you tell us. The best one was the paper rock scissors. They start arguing for like five minutes about how paper rock scissors works. Yeah. So all those things led me to believe that this is a parody. And if it is, if at least from the first couple episodes. If this is a parody of that kind of show, nope. it's brilliant. Nope. But as you have just informed me, one, it appears it was released on April Fool's Day. I didn't know about that. That's when it started airing. Whatever. So even better. But I mean, Baby Metal's album came out on April 1st yeah, also. But if this show is actually seriously going to try to for real make this Japanese scenario a thing. I don't think Japanese people care about April Fool's Day. This show is terrible and I'm not going to watch anymore. You don't need to watch anymore. So... They do resolve and explain everything. Is it, it dumb? It's a supernatural explanation, as you uh, might have guessed from uh, episode no, five. But no. it 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 doesn't res- There's no like climax or like satisfying resolution. It's just sort of like it goes out with like a whimper. Like, eh, eh. all right. Here's the only question I have: Is Lion the only smart one? Lion's barely a character, like a side. Yeah, character. that's why I think Lion's the smartest one. Because Lion's se- personality seems to be sitting there. Yeah, Lion, and then like the. That there's like a group of lion and like two or three the other strong people. Girl. Strong, strong girl, yeah, lion, strong girl, and like two other people. They're you know they're still around. I think in the last episode they're on screen for like All a right. minute. Maybe does, uh, does the guy? Does but the yeah, rapey they're guy like die? they're like the least. There's some. They're amongst the least crazy people. Does the rapey guy from the first episode who disappears die? Rapey guy is because he's still missing when I stopped watching. Yeah, no, he is. He is only half as rapey as you think, and he is not dead. Okay, but and he only comes back in like one episode. Fat guy has to die because fat guy literally just eats food all the time and bitches about food. Oh, lazy fat guy. <laughs> yeah, he basically all he's just lazy. Fat guy to the end. That's it. <laughs> you know There's what? nothing else going on with him. He's just sort of like there, like, oh, yep, he's a background character. There's something to be said for the same thing with like the two people who are all like super in love. Same deal. Wow. Those two reminded they're, they're me like, as no, they're like nothing throwaway characters. They, they were even like been in the show. They were like shit tier versions of the two characters from. It uh, would have been something if they gave every character a full episode to explain their backstory the way they gave some of the characters. Um, but. It's like Love Fawn isn't any more of an important character than any of the than fat guy or in love people or anything. But for some reason they gave her an whole episode to explain her shit and some of the other characters they didn't. But she has maybe even less impact on the story than they do. It's just but like just from the first episode, like I, I guess my advice to all of you as anime fans, watch the first episode because like watch it. Don't watch any more of the show. Pretend it was a parody of these kinds of shows, and you'll get a lot out of it, I think. Meh, maybe. The first episode is really good. It's kind of like uh, Kaze no Yojimbo. You watch the first episode, I mean, you're this like, isn't, yeah. This isn't like the worst anime ever. It's just not really worth your time, even for 13 episodes, unless you're really hard up for some animes. It's just, maybe you can make, we can at make least a it's not. Edit. At least it's not perverted, or, you know, it doesn't have any of those kinds of problems. Yeah. You know, but it's. I guess it's animated normally. What if you just cut out every scene where either nothing happens or a character says their catchphrase? How long would the show be? Uh, maybe 25% shorter than it is. Uh, so that means a lot of, like, all right, in the fourth episode, I'll just spoil it. At one, like, they're, like, they have this stupid plan. They, like, split up because some of them are going to go back to the bus. And I don't know why they think that's going to work because the bus, like, fell off a cliff and, like, isn't For some reason, the bus keeps working and never runs out of gas or anything. It never runs out of gas. They never fill it, but it just keeps running whenever they need it, like, whenever the bus keeps doing stuff. 
but it so they, it's in the, it's in the show straight to the end. The bus. but then like they're, they're half the group is like fuck this we're out. Which when they split into two groups, it was obviously like smart kids on that team, dumb kids on the stay behind team. Yeah. But the smart kids start numbering the trees, like walking away, and that's the kind of thing that happens in this kind of show. Mm-hmm. So they're numbering the trees on the map, and they, and get, they get to, to go like, in a circle. They get to tree like ninety one, and then they get to tree eight. Mm-hmm. So. They got back to the campsite pretty quick, so it couldn't have been that someone tricked them by putting an eight there way out on the map, but the map matched the... So was it just a supernatural thing? Because it didn't make sense otherwise. I mean, I'd have to explain the whole show, which I don't mind doing, but people get mad, so whatever, and I want to go home. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I don't even care, actually. It's interesting. Like Some dumb shows, Like I'll watch at the end because i got to know. But like there's Wheel nothing, of Time, to know. part of the reason I kept going was like I really wanted to know, and it was taking me longer to figure I it out. I want to know, Wikia. but I don't want to know. Read fifteen books badly. It took me like like I read a bunch of Wikia pages to spoil the Wheel of Time, and it was so hard to piece it all together from that. It was literally faster to read the books. <laughs> but with this show, uh, I just watch the first episode. I really think you should watch the first episode so you at least see what I mean. Yeah, I, you, don't even, you don't even need to watch that. Just watch Boca Rano instead. The first episode was interesting. Like, the yeah, fact that have. all the characters were like their screen names and every one of them was like a different kind of that guy from the internet. Mm. And yeah, whatever. The show has got bad and I'm not going to watch any more of it. We said the show was going to be good. Yeah, it, was, it, was, it was better than uh, most of the other shows out there. Yeah, but I feel like of the shows we said were going to be it's like good... A, it's like a C. This was the biggest... C plus, maybe? C minus? So far, of every show we, pre- on your mood. we pre-reviewed, this has been the biggest gap between what we expected and what we got. I didn't say... I never I didn't think, I never said it was going to be like so good. I said it had potential, which yeah, is Yeah, we right. said it had a lot of potential, but it, f- it fell so far short of that potential. I mean, it fell short of expectations, but only slightly. Yeah. But My I guess, expectation like, the, wasn't that high. My expectation was B, and it got a C. Yeah, but C gets you already into like Armageddon territory. So it's better than Armageddon. Like actually, I think Armageddon might be like a B minus. Well, Armageddon might be more entertaining in certain scenarios. Yeah, <laughs> like this gets less entertaining every minute that it goes on. Yeah, it, 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 don't come to this show for entertainment value. You're not gonna get that. Yeah. Now I now I started scrolling through reviews, and the people who say it's great clearly haven't seen a lot of anime. And the people who say it's bad, or no, sorry, the, pe- the people who say it's great either haven't seen a lot of anime or they're basically saying it's a shitty B movie that goes on forever. If you like shitty B movies, you'll love the it, shit out of this show. It does show. have that kind of feel. Like, and you'll enjoy it if you're literally in it to see how bad the script is written. Yeah, it, <laughs> Which, it has that kind of feel for sure. Like, I've enjoyed things on that level before, so I can see that. A poorly paced B movie? The people who say it's bad seem to be split between people who say they don't get it and There's nothing are, not to get. If you don't get it, it's a, this isn't a show. With, it spells it all out for you at near the end. They just tell you everything literally. In the Anime News Network forums, like in the episode five, I found a thread where like the giant Kappa gets revealed. It's not a Kappa. It's a half penguin, half person. But it's got the bald-headed Kappa-looking thing on it. It's not. There's no Kappa relation. So it's a penguin. It's half stuffed penguin, half person. Because at first I thought it was a penguin, but then I saw the bald head thing. I was like, oh, I guess it's, it's a Kappa. It's just bald. And a Japanese guy with like a thin mustache coming in. Yeah, whatever. Like, photo of him but like in the fourth episode they go into the train track tunnel and i'm yeah, like all the right train track tunnel's a big deal but then the kid the one girl the guys that got the flashlight he's like oh my god there's some crazy shit and then they all scream and run away without saying what it is but then when they get back to camp they're like it was a giant like main character yeah the that's not that is literally the second to last thing I would have expected them to have seen, screamed, and run <laughs> away from. On hi, my list was number one, train. <laughs> number two, ghost train. <laughs> ghost train would have made the show great. Yeah. Number three, the bear monster. That would have been great too. Number four, like mirrors of all the other kids. Uh, but at near the bottom of the list was things like actual Freddy Krueger, <laughs> uh, Black Dynamite, <laughs> uh, but Evangelion. Black, but Black Dynamite. Yeah. Like, literally, it's Hideaki Anno. Like, he is a character in the show now. But right at the bottom... That's Blue Blazes. You should watch that. Right at the very bottom down there is a bigger version of one of the characters. <laughs> Four meters tall, give or take. Mm. <laughs> Whatever. Don't watch this show. Just watch the first episode. <laughs> This 
has been Geek Nights with Rim and Scott. Special thanks to DJ Pretzel for the opening music, Cat Lee for web design, and Brando K for the logos. Be sure to visit our website at frontrowcrew.com for show notes, discussion, news, and more. Remember, Geek Nights is not one, but four different shows. SciTech Mondays, Gaming Tuesdays, Anime Comic Wednesdays, and Indiscriminate Thursdays. Geek Nights is distributed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Geek Nights is recorded live with no studio and no audience. But unlike those other late shows, it's actually recorded at night.